It's time now for Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons. For the pains of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, thousands of people take Enison for incredibly fast relief. For Enison is like a doctor's prescription, a combination of several medically proven ingredients, not just one. The relief Enison brings is astounding. Take only as directed. If pain persists or is unusually severe, see your doctor. Anison, A-N-A-C-I-N. Ladies and gentlemen, Kalanos Toothpaste presents Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, one of the most famous characters of American fiction in one of radio's most thrilling dramas. Tonight and every Thursday at the same time, the famous old investigator takes from his file and brings to us one of his most celebrated missing persons cases. To freshen your breath and brighten your teeth by removing ordinary unsightly surface stains, get Colonos toothpaste or tooth powder. Colonos is a double result dentifrice with a mouthwash effect built right in. Actually freshens your breath while it brightens your teeth. Tomorrow, by Colonos. Now for Mr. Keene and the case of the glamorous widow. It is late in the afternoon, and as Mr. Keene and his partner, Mike Clancy, prepare to leave their office for the day... What time is it, Mike? Uh, it's a little after five, Mr. Keene. Well, you may as well leave. I doubt if we'll have any more clients today. <laughs> That almost sounded like a stage cue, Mr. Keene. Come in. Oh, it's only the cleaning woman. May I uh, clean your office now, Mr. Keene? Yes, go right ahead. Thank you, sir. She must be new. The woman who used to clean this office was much older. Oh, well, Mr. Keene, I, I guess I'll be on my way. I'll see you in the morning, Mike. Yes, good night. Good night, Mike. Well, I may as well get my hat. Uh, and, uh... Mr. Keene, sir. Yes? Are you leaving the office now? Yes, I am. I was hoping I could talk to you, sir. About what? It's... It's very important. So important that... Well, I took this job just to get a chance to tell you my story. You did? Yes, you see, sir, I, I felt that I wasn't important enough to make an appointment and waste your time, but I thought if I... Here, could... give me that pail. Now sit down and try to relax down, sir? Of course. Right here. You're very kind, Mr. Keene. If you went to all the trouble of taking a job just to get in to see me, your business must be very urgent. Well, sir, the work I usually do is better than this. My name is Thompson, sir. Adelaide Thompson. Almost everybody calls me Addie. What's the trouble, Addie? Three weeks ago, my mistress, Mrs. Carlyle, was found dead, and... Go on, Eddie. I was Mrs. Carlyle's personal maid, and she was so good to me. She always treated me right, Mr. Keene. Gave me nice presents and a decent salary. And you say she was found dead? Yes, from sleeping pills. The police think she took an overdose herself, but I know different. Mrs. Carlyle never even used sleeping pills, Mr. Keene. She was murdered. How old a woman was she? Just 30. And the most beautiful woman you ever saw. She used to be an artist's model. And she married a very rich man. And, well, when he died about four years ago, he left her a million dollars. I see. She had looks and money, Mr. Keene, and plenty of suitors, too. First, there was Craig Pendleton. Oh, he was a slick one. Handsome as could be. What was his occupation? Nobody knew. But he dressed like a man with money and... He always seemed to have enough to take Mrs. Carlyle to fancy places. She liked Mr. Pendleton. I guess all women liked him. He had a slick way of talking. <laughs> I mean it, Doris. You're the only woman I've ever loved. Oh, now, really, Craig. You expect me to believe that? It's true. Oh, when I hold you in my arms like this and we dance, I have the feeling that you'll disappear, vanish like something in a dream. Mm. 
Very pretty. Do you think my bank account will vanish with me? Doris, how could you say a thing like that? Well, a rich widow must be cautious. You're beautiful, Doris. Your perfection. Mm -hmm. Even if I don't believe what you say, I, I think you're sweet to say it. I would even admit, Craig, that I like to be in your arms. Yes, I, I like it very much. Eddie, was Mrs. Carlyle in love with Craig? I couldn't say, Mr. Keene. There were so many others. For instance? Well, there was Buddy Hilliard. I guess he was my favorite. He was the youngest suitor. But he was awful cute, Mr. Keene. And what did Buddy do for a living, Eddie? He sold insurance. He didn't make much money at it. In fact, I heard him say once that he was always in debt. He used to come over to Mrs. Carlyle's apartment a lot. I guess he was crazy about her. Buddy? Yes, Doris? Could you turn off that phonograph, please? I'm making a phone call. Oh, I, I'm sorry. You can turn it back on now if you like, buddy. Oh, it isn't important. My gosh. What? You you look terrific, Doris. Do you like my gown? Oh, that must have cost a fortune. It's an original model. I paid $300 for it. $300? Mm-hmm. Holy smoke, I don't make that much in a month. Oh, you will, buddy, when you get a little older. Oh, there you go, talking about my age again. I'm 26. Oh, goodness. And a failure. Oh, now, buddy. I am, I tell you, Doris. I've no right to even talk to you. I can't afford it. Buddy, are we going to debate about money all evening, or are we going to have fun? Well, where do you want to go? How about the palladium room? Holy smoke, that'd break me. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have mentioned it. All right, Doris, come on. Where to? The Palladium Room. Oh, absolutely not. But you just said you I, wanted I, to. I don't care much about dancing tonight. You know what we'll do? What? We'll go for a walk in the park and, and then see a movie. Oh, well, isn't that kind of dull for you? <laughs> not at all. Be a good boy now, buddy, and don't fret. We'll have a marvelous time together this evening. Buddy was an awful nice kid. One thing is certain, Mr. Keene, he had nothing to do with Mrs. Carlyle's death. Well, were there any other suitors, Eddie? Two others, Mr. Keene. Warner Frederick and Joe Spence. Mr. Frederick is an art critic. He's awful smart, and Mrs. Carlyle had a lot of respect for his brains. He used to kid me a lot, but I didn't mind. He meant it all in good fun. You say Mrs. Carlyle will return in a few minutes, Eddie? Yes, Mr. Frederick. She asked for you to wait. Oh, thank you. Well, Eddie, I, uh, I understand you're becoming interested in art. Well, I like a picture now and then. Oh, there's an exhibition of Picasso in one of the galleries downtown. Would you like to go? What's Picasso? He's a great painter, Eddie. Oh, fancy stuff, Mr. Frederick, huh? Like in the museum? Yes. Well, that ain't the kind of pictures I meant. Oh, you don't care much for that, eh? No. In other words, Eddie, you don't know much about art, but you know what you like. That's right, Mr. Frederick. Mm -hmm. Well, there's one form of art I'm sure we'd both agree on, Eddie. The art of admiring a woman who is truly beautiful. Like Mrs. Carlyle? Like Mrs. Carlyle. I think she's the most desirable woman in the world. <laughs> Joe Spence was just the opposite, Mr. Keene. And what was he like, well, Eddie? Just thinking about him scares me. I got a feeling he used to be a gangster. I'll never forget one day when he said to Mrs. Carlyle... Now listen to me, Doris, and listen hard. I know all about that lineup of jerks who keeps following you around. I don't like it here. I'm liable to do something about it, you hear? So get rid of him. Get rid of him fast. Or I'll get rid of him. Even faster. Joe Spence is a killer, Mr. Keene. You can see it in his eyes and hear it in his voice. So Doris Carlyle had four suitors, and any of them or none of them are suspects. Three weeks ago, I came in late after my day off. 
Usually I go right to my room and go to bed. But that night, I don't know, Mr. Keene, maybe, maybe I had a feeling, a feeling of trouble. Mrs. Carlyle, it's Addie. I'm back. Guess she ain't home. What's that light doing on in her room? My goodness, how many times have I told that cook to check through the house and see if the lights are off? You'd think it. Mrs. Carlyle. Mrs. Carlyle! She's dead. It was horrible, Mr. Keene. Horrible. Eddie, <laughs> calm yourself, my dear. One of those men killed her, Mr. Keene. I know it. If you find out who killed her, I'll, I'll work for you for nothing for the rest of my life. I'll, I'll any... find out, Eddie. I promise. This is Joe Spencer's apartment, Mike. Uh, we better be careful, Mr. Keene. He may be a tough customer. He was the only one of all four suitors who actually threatened Mrs. Carlyle that we know about. That's why I've come to see him first. Well? Are you Joe Spence? Who wants to know? My name is Keene. This is my partner, Mike Clancy. Well? What's up, Slim? A couple of guys here looking for you. Uh, come in. I'm a private investigator, Mr. Spence. A cop? Now, take it easy, Slim. Well, you're a private investigator, Mr. Keene. So what? I'm investigating the death of Doris Carlyle. So am I. Are you? When I find a rat who's done it, I'll blow him out from between his ears. What are you coming to me for, anyway? I wanted to find out just what you knew about the case. Evidently, you too have a reason to suspect murder. It sounds like he's trying to pin the rap on you, Joe. Now, just keep this a two-man affair, son, between Mr. Keene and your boss. And if you're for making out a foursome, why, you and I can talk it over. All right, Mike, I don't think there'll be any difficulty. Now, look, Keene, I told you I'm looking for the rat who killed Doris myself. Now, what else do you want to know? I want to know if you killed her. Me? You. No. No is an easy word to say. What else do you want? Proof. Mm -hmm. I'll give you proof. Will you? What reason would I have to bump her off? I was, I was nuts about her. You were jealous, too. Sure, Mr. King. But only in the beginning. And if you figure that's a motive, you clued me out. Do I? Why? Because two days before she died, she and I got engaged to be married. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll return to Mr. Keene and the case of the glamorous widow. Meanwhile, two handicaps to business and social success are surface stained teeth and unwelcome breath. To help correct this dental double trouble when due to improper cleansing, try Colonos, a double result toothpaste that actually freshens your breath while it brightens your teeth, brightens them beautifully by removing ordinary unsightly surface stains. High polishing, high forming Colonos has a mouthwash effect built right in. When you use Colonos, swish its active foam thoroughly through your mouth to get the extra benefit of this added mouthwash effect. Get K-O-L-Y-N-O-S, Colonos toothpaste, or if you prefer, Colonos tooth powder. Now back to Mr. Keene and the case of the glamorous widow. After leaving Joe Spence's apartment, Mr. Keene and his partner Mike Clancy pay a visit to the second of beautiful and wealthy Doris Carlyle suitors, Warner Frederick, the art critic. Now sit down, Mr. Keene. Mr. Clancy. Thanks. Quite an apartment you have here, Mr. Frederick. Oh, I, I wish I had more room on my walls for the paintings I like, and the ones I can afford. Well, it seems to me you've got enough pictures here already. <laughs> yes, you must uh, know quite a bit about paintings, Mr. Frederick. My father was an art dealer. I can recognize a masterpiece merely by glancing at it, <laughs> if you'll forgive me for being immodest. Well, we've come to you, Mr. Frederick, hoping you might be able to supply us with a few details concerning Doris Carlyle's death. Oh, naturally, I'll do anything I can, Mr. Keene. When did you see her last, Mr. Frederick? Three hours before she died. 
Did you tell that to the police? Of course. I have nothing to hide. As a matter of fact, I didn't even know it might have been murder until the police called me. I understand Eddie gave them that idea. Well, when you left Mrs. Carlyle that night, did she say anything about having another appointment? No, sir. She said she had a headache, wanted to rest. And what did you do? Why, well, I went to an exhibition. May I ask where? At 749 East 57th Street, the Claren Gallery. I see. Is there anything you told the police that you haven't told me? Well, no, Mr. Keene. Are you sure? I suggest you give me all the facts, Mr. Frederick. Well, there was one thing I failed to mention. I was so broken up at the time. What was that fact, Mr. Frederick? I suppose it would have helped me. It, it would have placed me under less suspicion if Doris was actually murdered. You see, Mr. Keene, Doris and I were engaged to be married. Well, can you beat it, Mr. Keene? What did Mrs. Carlyle figure on? Collecting boyfriends and husbands like a string of polar ponies? Craig Pendleton is the next of our suitors, Mike. His apartment is on Park Avenue. Let's run up there now. Well? Is Mr. Pendleton at home? He's gone out for a few minutes. Who wants to see him? The name is Keene. This is Mr. Clancy. We're investigating the death of Doris Carlyle. Come in. Thank you. I'm Gloria Hayden, a friend of Craig's. I see. Craig just went out for the newspapers. He'll be right back. Good. My, oh, my. What? Well, I was just admiring that fur coat on the chair. It's sable. Well, what of it? It's very pretty. Is it yours? There's no law against owning a sable coat, is there? None at all. Uh, did you say your name was Miss Hayden? Yes. And how do you happen to be wearing a wedding ring? It's none of your business. Oh, no, take it easy, sister. The lady doesn't want to answer the questions, Mike. I won't urge her. She can always answer to the police. Well, I've got nothing to hide. I'm married to Craig. He, he gave me that coat as a wedding present. He must be rather wealthy. May I ask how long you've been married to Craig Pendleton? Just a week. I left my job in a Broadway show. He's taking me on a honeymoon soon. Oh, that's very interesting. Where to? South America. Rio de Janeiro. Craig says it's very romantic in Rio. Yes. It's also quite far from here, Mrs. Pendleton. What do you mean? Mr. Keene. Good evening. Well, we... Uh... Seem to have guests. Yes, Craig. This man's name is Keene, and this is his partner. They're asking questions. Oh? What kind of questions? Questions about you and your wife and Doris Carlyle. There's every reason to believe that Doris Carlyle was murdered. Craig, I'm scared. Take it easy, Gloria. Tell me, Mr. Pendleton, what business are you in? I make investments, Mr. Keene. The kind of investments that enable you to buy your wife a sable coat? My investments pay off very well. Are you a gambler, Mr. Pendleton? Why should I answer that? Because I'd like to know how you got the money to pay for this apartment and that coat. And if I don't tell you, Mr. Keene? I'll have the police get my information for me. Yes, I am a gambler. What of it? Can you prove you won the money you seem to have? How else could I get it? By theft or blackmail? Well, that's not so great. Gloria, you... please. Let me handle it. Are you inferring, Mr. Keene, that I might have blackmailed Doris Carlyle? Perhaps, Mr. Pendleton. That would have been a waste of time. Would it? I could have gotten her money in another way. Gloria here knew that. I've told her. And just how could you have gotten Mrs. Carlyle's money in another way, Mr. Pendleton? By marrying her. She accepted my proposal the day before she died. Well, that's three of them, Mr. Keene. And all of them claim they were engaged to marry Doris Carlyle just before she died. So two of them must be lying. Perhaps all three are lying, Mike, to cover themselves. And what do we do now, boss? We're going up to see the last of Doris Carlyle's suitors, Buddy Hilliard. But first, I want to check on a few alibis that were given me tonight. I'll show 
show you to young Hilliard's room myself, Mr. Keene and Mr. Francis. Thank you, Mrs. Finnegan. I've been his landlady now for almost a year, and I never saw him act the way he's been acting since that girl of his died. Mrs. Carlyle? Yes. He was in love with her, all right. And since his death, since her death, he's hardly stirred from his room. He, he just sits around grieving, and there's nothing I can do to help him. Oh, just like that, there usually isn't. Just three days before the wedding. Oh, what a shame. Wedding? What wedding? Huh. Here we go again. Why, Buddy Hilliard and Mrs. Carlyle were going to get married. Is that what he told you, Mrs. Finnegan? Well, he not only told me, Mr. Keene, but I went downtown with the two of them to get the license, and I was going to be a witness at the wedding. Just a second, Mrs. Finnegan. You mean you actually had proof that Buddy and Mrs. Carlyle took out a license to marry? I saw it myself. Well, that means that the other three are lying, Mr. Keene. Definitely, Mike. Evidently, Buddy was the man she really was engaged to. Well, uh, this is Buddy's room. I know he's in. I, I didn't see him go out today. Well, if there's no answer... Well, knock again, Mike. That's funny. Do you have a key to this room, Mrs. Finnegan? Uh, yes, yes, a master key. Here it is. I can't imagine how he could have left that... Oh, Mr. Keene! Yes, I'm afraid we're too late. Boss, is he... He's dead. He's been shot through the head. The police will be here in a few minutes, Mike, but we can't wait for them. Why not, Mr. Keene? Because we've got a date with a murderer. Come on, Mike. We're going to Doris Carlyle's apartment to reconstruct the crime. When we put our hands on the man who killed her, we'll have poor Buddy's killer in the bargain. Mrs. Carlyle's body was here, Eddie, on this chair? Yes, Mr. Keene. Was there anything unusual about the room when you found her? The room was just as it is now. Mrs. Carlyle's body was over there in that chair, next to them magazines. Well, that's quite a pile of them. Yes. Uh, practically all of them are Hollywood movie magazines. Well, you see, Mrs. Carlyle used to love to read about the movie stars. Hmm. Odd. What is, Mr. King? That a magazine like this one should be in with the others. Hmm. Mr. King, you said you wanted to see her bank statements. She always kept them in that drawer. Oh, uh... You go through those bank statements, Mike. You know what I'm looking for. Uh, yes, sir. Meanwhile, I'm making a complete inspection of this apartment from top to bottom. Mr. Keene, I got it, boss. The check I hoped you'd find, Mike? Yes, sir. And saints preserve us. If this is really the guilty man... It is, Mike. I'm certain of that. Because I found a very amazing clue myself. You have, sir? Mike, I think we'll have the murderer pay us a visit here. Let me have that phone, please. Well, that's our man, Mike. Eddie, would you please answer it? Yes, Mr. Keene. And don't be afraid. I'm not, sir. Not with you and Mr. Clancy around. Well... This is it, boss. Keep your gun handy, Mike. Come inside, sir. Here he comes. Good evening, Mr. Frederick. Well, good evening, Mr. Keene. I was rather surprised by your call. It's rather late for a visit, isn't it? Not too late, Mr. Frederick, to apprehend a murderer. Sir? You killed Doris Carlyle. Are you joking, sir? You caused her death by giving her sleeping pills in this apartment. You probably put them in a drink. Yes, did I? And why, may I ask? Because you sold her a bogus painting. As an art critic, you advised her to spend $100,000 on a Rembrandt painting. That one over there on the wall. The painting, however, is not genuine. It's a clever imitation. How do you know I sold it to her? This check was made out to the Claren Galleries, the firm you were working with. Naturally, they were kind enough to back up your alibi when I called. You're very clever, Mr. Keene. And so are you, but you made a few mistakes. The night Mrs. Carlyle was murdered, she quarreled with you. By accident, she'd come across this art magazine, and she discovered that the so-called Rembrandt you sold her 
was actually in the Louvre in Paris. Rather than face prison and disgrace, you contrived to murder her. That's quite right, Mr. Keene. He admits it. The murderer. He admits it. Maggie, there's no need for that. I'm sorry, Mr. Keene. Frederick, why did you also murder Buddy Hilliard? Was it because he won Doris Carlyle away from you? Or did he also find incriminating evidence of your first killing? The young fool seemed to have found out what you found out. He paid for it. The way you're going to pay, Frederick. Mike. Come on, Frederick. Let's get going. You'll find a police car waiting for you in front of the building. Oh, thank you. That's very convenient, Mr. Keene. Well, Eddie, it appears as if our search is over. I'm so grateful to you, Mr. Keene. I just can't tell you how I feel. You needn't try. I, I think I understand. Is this a picture of Mrs. Carlyle? Yes, sir. She was very beautiful. The most beautiful woman I ever saw, Mr. Keene. And the kindest. I'm sure she would have been grateful, Eddie, for your loyalty. And so Mr. Keene solves another perplexing crime and brings the glamorous widow's murderer to justice. There are wallflowers in business, just as there are wallflowers in every social gathering. And frequently, they are the people with dull, dingy teeth or unwelcome breath. Now, to help correct this dental double trouble, when due to improper cleansing, use Colonel's toothpaste. It's a high-polishing, high-forming toothpaste with a mouthwash effect built right in. A double-result toothpaste that actually freshens your breath while it brightens your teeth. You see the special high-polishing action of Kalanos quickly removes ordinary unsightly surface stains from your teeth and thus really brightens them. And the wonderful high-forming action of Kalanos makes your breath fragrantly sweeter, actually freshens it. To get the full benefit of the extra mouthwash effect Kalanos offers, use Kalanos as you would any other toothpaste. But after you finish brushing, swish its active, bubbly foam thoroughly through your mouth like a mouthwash. Remember, for fresher breath, for brighter teeth, for a more sparkling smile, use Colonos toothpaste. It has been approved by dentists everywhere. If you prefer powder, try Colonos tooth powder. It offers the same double result and has a refreshing wintergreen flavor as well. Get K-O-L-Y-N-O-S. Colonos toothpaste or tooth powder. Tomorrow, buy Colonos. You've been listening to Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, on the air every Thursday at this time. Don't miss Mr. Keene next Thursday when the kindly old Tracer turns to the case of the Golden Scorpion. Have you discovered improved Old English no-rubbing wax? It's the high-quality wax at the surprisingly low cost of only 39 cents a pint. Made by a carefully controlled process, Old English provides millions of tiny wax particles to make brighter, satin-smooth floors. Self-polishing. Get Old English no-rubbing wax tomorrow. Mr. Keene, tracer of lost persons, will be on the air next Thursday at the same time. This is Larry Elliott saying goodbye for Mr. Keene and the Whitehall Pharmacal Company, makers of Colonel's toothpaste and tooth powder and many other dependable high-quality drug products. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>